What are we discussing on today's podcast, you ask? Well, first, got to discuss that pitiful series to the Minnesota Twins. And then it's Monday, so we got Sully Baseball of Locked On MLB on the pod for a crossover to discuss fight night in Cleveland and also discuss the D-backs and all the disappointing teams post MLB trade deadline, discussing all that and so much more on today's Locked On Diamondbacks crossover. You are Locked On Diamondbacks, your daily Arizona Diamondbacks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked on Dimebacks podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day listening to who? It was charismatic host of this podcast, Miller Thomas. I'm a multimedia journalist and I'm a graphic designer, so please go check out my website, millerthomas24.myportfolio.com. I'm there to see all my latest work from my packages to my articles to my photos and my graphic design. If you want to see more content by me, just follow me on Twitter at Creator Thomas 24 from my personal account, or just look up Locked on Dimebacks, both Twitter, Instagram for the podcast handle. And of course, thank you for making Locked on Dimebacks your first listen every day. I would not be able to do this podcast without you, my loyal listeners, sharing, subscribing, reviewing, doing all that so I could do this podcast for you. Thank you. It's free and available on all platforms. So please continue to tell your friends. And one of those platforms is YouTube. So please hit subscribe on the Locked on Diamondbacks YouTube channel. Now, for the YouTube audience, you're only going to see me talking about <clears throat> the D-backs series loss to the Minnesota Twins to hear about all the teams that suck post-trade deadline, including the D-backs, or to hear about the Chicago White Sox Cleveland Guardians fight. Go to Locked on Diamondbacks YouTube channel for those videos. Audio, you will hear all of it. So let's get into it and let's talk about this series against the Minnesota Twins because the D-backs once again get swept by another team. The D-backs are currently, hopefully you guys didn't hear that. My phone is ringing. The D-backs are currently on a six-game losing streak, and they just look absolutely pitiful. If you thought the D-backs had a chance of winning the NL West still, put those pipe dreams aside because the D-backs are currently eight games back of the Dodgers at the time of me recording this podcast, and it is not looking good for the D-backs. Uh, they are absolutely pitiful right now and i don't see any scenario where they could sneak into the back door of winning the nl west i think we could just wrap up any division hopes and dreams that we used to have at the all-star break when it was the halfway point of the season any hopes and dreams we had of the d-backs still winning the nl west you can throw those dreams out the window soon you might have to throw your playoff dreams and hopes out the window too but not just yet just because that final spot in the wild card race the d-backs only a game and a half behind it the rest of the wild card i don't know if the d-backs can crack into the top two wild card spots because the giants are a few games above the d-backs so are the Philadelphia Phillies. So the D-backs only opportunity is to catch that final spot in the wild card. And they're not going to do it with a performance that we just saw this past weekend. Because I got a question for the audience. Are the Arizona Diamondbacks cursed? That's what I asked myself after that series finale against the Minnesota Twins. Where it felt like maybe the D-backs was going to get something positive and something was finally going to go their way with a Christian Walker ninth inning home run. We're going to see the Paul Seawald, the answer to our closing problems, come in and finally shut the door because in his previous appearance, that 12-1 to 1 or whatever the final score was, smacking by the Twins on the D-backs, Paul Seawald in his only inning went out there and struck out the side. So I was super excited to see him in a real high leverage, pressurized moment. And what does he do? The very first pitch of the ninth, inning in his save opportunity home run to tie the game walk and then gives up a two run shot to end it paul seawall just rips the heart out of every d-backs fan who is like not again let's not go down this road again can we end this cyclical nightmare that we are on can we get off this ride the d-backs fans have been on this ride of torture from this bullpen for so long and one guy who wasn't going to fix your issues, but I thought the D-backs bullpen overall was solid. If you had to 
denigrate or you know make a mark against the bullpen you're like whenever you put any of these relievers in the ninth inning they suck the mcgoffs the castros the chafins the uh whoever else you want to mention like all these guys are good except when they pitch in the ninth inning so if you could just figure out that ninth inning maybe everyone else would make sense in this bullpen and i thought paul seawald was going to be be the answer to the d-backs problems but no that is not the case at least not in his first save opportunity for the d-backs it was not the case i don't know what Brent Strom can do there. Uh, the vibes around the D-backs are just not good right now. And what adds insult to injury as I wonder whether the D-backs are cursed. Ketel Marte leaves this game early with injury, and he's been absolutely phenomenal the whole season and post-MLB trade deadline. Been one of the hottest players on this D-backs team, really carrying this offense. Lords Goriel seems to be heating back up. He seems to have woken up in a him and a Ketel Marte. Him and Aketa Marte, one two man duo, um, could have been really forceful and you know, really aggressive for this D backs offense. But now, Aketa Marte, it feels like he's going to be fine day to day, but don't like to see him leave with injury. And also, just further salt to the wound, the D backs offense was going against Dallas. Keichel, we saw Dallas Keuchel in a D-backs uniform just last season. And guess what? He looked washed. Dallas Keuchel looked like he shouldn't be in Major League Baseball anymore. And he's looked like that for a while now. With the D-backs last season, he had a 9-6-4 ERA and 18.2 innings pitch. In 2021, in 162 innings pitch, he had a 5-2-8 ERA. He, he just hasn't been good at all the last two seasons. I don't think Dallas Keuchel should even be on a major league roster. But with the performance he had against the D-backs today, he might join the Cy Young Award race. Five innings, one earned run, but wasn't even a good performance. He gave up eight hits. The D-backs had like six, seven stolen bases against Dallas Keuchel, and it did not matter. D-backs in the game where they get double-digit stolen bases, I think, if I counted correctly, because you get two from Tommy Pham. You get one from Jace Peterson. You get one from Christian Walker. You get one from Carson Kelly. You get two from Jake McCarthy. You get one from Corbin Carroll. So I think you get eight stolen bases in this game, plus 11 opportunities with runners scoring position. And the D-backs only score three runs total. Absolutely disgusting. Absolutely disheartening. If you're the pitching staff, if you're the offense, you're like, what else can we do? We're trying to be chaotic on the bases. We're trying to play D-backs baseball, trying to play small ball. D-backs are not afraid to bun out here. And nothing that the D-backs do, it doesn't matter how many bases they steal. They can't get that big clutch hit. Or even sometimes when it's like one out and a runner on third, it feels like the D-backs are getting that strikeout for the second out. And then all of a sudden that guy comes in and ground ball or fly out for the third out. So D-backs offense can't clutch it out. D-backs pitching staff also can't clutch it out. It's just a myriad of issue right now for the Arizona Diamondbacks. But once again, if you need a little silver lining, if you need a little saving grace with what's going on with the D-backs so far and the rest of the season, the D-backs only a game and a half out of a wild card. I know the D-backs only one game. If you could believe it, the D-backs only one game above 500. At one point, what were they, like 15 to 18 games above 500? Absolutely cru cruising in early June. At this point, August 6th, Sunday at 6.47 p.m., the D-backs game and a half back of a wild card spot. And only one game above 500, minus 18 in the run differential department. This D backs team is not playing good baseball right now. Corey McCarroll needs to wake up. At least we got a good Zach Gallon performance. Will the D backs ever get back on track to what we saw the first three months of the season? I don't know. I'm not feeling very good as a D backs fan right now, watching this team every day. I'm just hoping and praying to God that something could change.